It is great, it is a privilege to be here. A few years ago, just a few years ago, I would have declined the invitation to be part of this amazing event. I was using pseudonyms to write congressional testimonies, articles. I was using various usernames, passwords, to access several email accounts I had created to evade detection by the government of Equatorial Guinea. Mostly, I was trying to protect my family that still lives there. Right now, it is President Obiang, the president of Equatorial Guinea, and his family. They are having to create multiple identities in the forms of fake corporations and middlemen to avoid international arrest, to avoid international prosecution. Right now, I only use my real name, Tutu Alicante. And I am grateful to the Oslo Freedom Forum and delighted to share with you the story of my home, my home country and the mechanisms through which we can push, we can forge an Equatoguinean spring. I am from Anobon, a small, isolated, but beautiful island in Equatorial Guinea. In August of 1993, an event occurred that forever changed my life. I had been studying to become a Catholic priest. But on that day, the military arrived with orders to suppress an uprising by a group of young men. They arrested, tortured, abused all the young men in sight. They publicly executed the two of them. They burned down my family house, my family's home. That night, I asked my father what we were going to do about our house. And to this day, I vividly remember the sadness, the defeat in my, in my father's face. He could barely say, utter a word. His response to me was, there is nothing we could do. There is nothing we can do, son. His uh, resignation was shared by the entire community. I refused to believe that nothing could be done. Five months later, I went to the United States to study and acquire the skills that would help bend the arc of history toward justice in Equatorial Guinea. I became a lawyer. President Obiang has been in power for 33 years, making him the world's longest serving head of state. He directs a regime characterized by human rights violations and corruption. Yet he wants to persuade the international community, people like Saudi Equatorial Guinea, people like you in this room today, that his regime is benevolent, that his regime is altruistic. In 2008, President Obiang donated to UNESCO $3 million out of the national treasury of the country to create an award named after him. A painful irony to those of us that know about the extreme poverty in Equatorial Guinea. So EG Justice, the organization I founded, launched a global campaign to stop this price. With the support of some of you in this room, Andrew, I think you're somewhere here today, along with people like the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Grasa Machel, Wally Soyinka, Chinua Achebe, for three years, we compelled UNESCO to postpone awarding this prize. But then two months ago, in March, I was in Paris. UNESCO refused to even let me speak. And they approved the prize under the guise of 
African pride and solidarity. As I was, as I was sitting in the room and the diplomats were, body, were voting, I was thinking to myself, how could UNESCO approve this prize in the name of African pride when children in my country lack basic school supplies? When my nieces, my nephews, must fetch water in buckets every single morning. There is poverty in every country. But Equatorial Guinea, my country, is the third largest oil producing nation in Africa. 500,000 people, half a million people. The GDP per capita of my country is higher than that of France, higher than that of Japan. But what does these numbers, what does this ranking mean when people in my country do not have running water? What does it mean when people lack adequate health care? What does it mean when people lack basic needs, electricity? Where does the money go? Just a couple of weeks earlier, before I was at the UNESCO, the French authorities raided a 101-room mansion in Paris, enjoyed by the Obiang family, two kilometers away from the UNESCO headquarters. They seized furniture, rare artwork, worth tens of millions of dollars, 11 luxury sports cars belonging to President Obiang's son. Just last month, the French authorities issued an international arrest warrant against President Obiang's son for money laundering and fraud. Not coincidentally, President Obiang has appointed him to represent Equatorial Guinea at UNESCO in an effort to grant him diplomatic immunity in France. There is no freedom of information, there is no freedom of the press in Equatorial Guinea. It is extremely dangerous for people in my country to speak their minds about this price and the misplaced priorities it represents. The government is so intolerant of criticism that it has labeled anyone that's spoken against this price enemy of the state, like my friend, Dr. Wenceslao Mansogo. This is us in Geneva. This is a respected doctor, physician in Equatorial Guinea, a fervent pro-democracy and human rights defender On February 9th, he was arrested, incarcerated, and just yesterday, just yesterday, I found out that he got a sentence of three years and a fine of $71,000. Why? Because of his outspokenness. When I met Dr. Wenceslao, in 2008, I asked him, Doctor, how do you, why do you document human rights violations in such a repressive environment? His response to me, Joven, hacemos camino al andar. Young men, we make the road by walking. Meanwhile, President Obiang, when he travels, he has his choice of luxury jets. At night when he sleeps, he has his choice of over a dozen palaces spread across the country. He makes no distinction between his assets and those of the state. His definition of African pride, rigged elections that he wins by at least 95% of the vote. A parliament in which, out of a hundred parliamentarians, one represents the opposition. Hand-picked judges. This is a man, President Obiang, is a man who just recently oversaw the kidnapping, repatriation, torture, and execution of four Equatorian, 
Refugees, they have fled the country. President Obiang claimed that they were a threat, they represent, represented a threat to his family, had them brought back and executed. Torture. And this is his, this is his meaning of African pride. At EG Justice, we use legal and other forms of advocacy, other advocacy tools, to denounce human rights violations and fight, combat corruption. But what excites me the most is the work that we do with young people. Young activists who dare to use their creativity to interpret and influence the universe, the world that we have inherited. Young artists like Ramon Nze, who created the beautiful images I have shared with you here today. We are using social media, comics, theater, hip hop, to inform and mobilize people in new and exciting ways. We believe that by informing, by giving information to people, and giving them a way to voice their concerns to people around the world, we will build a free and open Equatorial Guinea. By opening the flow of information, by making information available to people, we will build a free and open Equatorial Guinea. President Obiang is poised to make his son, to hand power down to his son, make his son the next president. And this is why the need for collective action, the need for change is so urgent. What can you do? Go to our website, register, support the work that we're doing with these young activists. Help demand freedom for Dr. Wenceslao Mansogo, an innocent man. Help us block diplomatic immunity for President Obiang son. There are, I believe, many journalists in here. You can help us deny President Obiang good press, good press coverage internationally. Two months ago, my father called me. It was my birthday. And the same man who once told me there was nothing we could do about rampant human rights violations and corruption now told me, son, hijo mio, we are very proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. I must confess to you that once again, I was deeply moved by my father's words. But this time, it was because he could see the change was possible. And like him, like my father, many more people, a growing number of young people in Equatorial Guinea believe that change is possible. We make the road by walking, we do. The road to freedom, the road to equality, the road to human dignity. It is long, it's daunting, it demands courage. You're here because you're courageous. And I can assure you that the road that we can build by walking together we lead to an Equator Guinean spring. That's right. That's precisely what I believe, that the road that you and I can build together will lead to an Equator Guinean spring. Thank you, Oslo Freedom Forum. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. <laughs>